Hey guys, I'm Tim. I'm Bob. I'm Mike. And this is the Board Game Rundown. Today, thanks to Mike, we are going to review his copy of Dwellings of Eldervale. Uh, this is by Breaking Games, designed by Luke Laurie. And uh, this is a massive box uh, that holds a beautiful game. Uh, we've seen lots of gigantic games, though, with fantastic art. Uh, but how does it play, right? How, how is it? One of the things that got me at first, and I'm not sure if this is Kickstarter exclusive. I know this is a Kickstarter This version, is the version, Legendary Edition. Right. Um, is that So you got this awesome tray, and, and it's like, oh, this is the blue workers, right? And like, okay, these are their abilities, asymmetric, right? Everybody's got different ones. And then it's like, oh, wait a minute. I got like a whole other thing, does different stuff on this mm -hmm. side. Thought that was super cool. And then inside, you've got uh, these nice silk screen meeples. And then it's like, what are these half like the roof like the that's roof. weird mm -hmm. you know and then as mike is like, like explain the rules and it's like oh no you you put the roof on your dude and now it's a dwelling and now it's a dwelling which is amazing uh anyways we'll get more into those mechanics in a minute there's just some like first impression things that i saw mm -hmm. i was like oh that's rad yeah. that's rad that's rad okay that's pretty cool uh -huh. <laughs> trays are badass uh yeah they're, re they're really first impression for me is the box this is actually my favorite box of all time there's only one box i feature above on top of my shelves and this is the one it's just yeah. incredible to look at well and what's also incredible and we'll show it in the top down is that you've got this amazing artwork on the inside of inside the box lid mm -hmm. it's so so cool and yeah man uh there are different versions, right? Where you've got like different monsters on the cover. Yeah, Patrick has the other version where it's kind of a zoom in of, of this, this dude, particular right? monster. Um, I thought it was cool, but this one has all of the colors of all the different realms on the box, mm -hmm. so yeah. it just pops I more. Dig that, yeah. So, uh, Mike, I'm going to let you give the brief overview on like kind of like how do sure. you play this? You don't have to go through every rule or anything like that. Yeah. Just um, so essentially this is a worker placement game at its heart. Um, what you're going to do on your turn is you start with one of three different workers available to you and you're going to place one of those workers out in Elder Vale. Okay. Once you do that, you're going to trigger an action just like a worker placement game. Um, all of your different actions, just a brief overview um. is, uh, these are your starting realms that have your main base actions. Uh, they're going to do things like allow you to get more workers, allow you to get cooler workers that mm -hmm. may help you in battle. They allow you to draw more magic cards, which you can use for in-game points or instant abilities. Um, you can build dwellings, which of course is one of the major ways you score points in dwellings. Plus, it makes battle better. Um, and also, um, you have ways to convert resources into gold, which are a wild for the game. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, when the game starts, you can't trigger combat. You start in a peaceful time where people are not willing to fight you. So um, on my second placement, he, he, he can go anywhere adjacent to where my first worker went. Because it's peaceful, I can't place him where that monster is, okay? Then I resolve that action. When I'm out of actions, which of course would be after my third worker, my only choice is to recall all of my workers. They can go back onto my starting card over here, and they have more actions that I can do. Most of them are consistent with what you see in the ruins here, which mm -hmm. are your starting actions. So I have three more actions I can perform to get resources, buy new workers, or build dwellings, okay? But where it gets interesting is that after everybody's first recall, now we can attack each other. So my first worker still has to be by himself, but my second one has to be adjacent, and it can be where Tim's guy is. I resolve the action first, so that's cool. I still get the benefit. The whole reason I went there is probably for the benefit. But now combat is triggered. So Kim, as uh. the uh, Kim, I called you Kim. You are Tim. Fine. My girlfriend is Kim. Um, I'm not his girlfriend for the record. <laughs> Correct. Okay. So Tim gets first dibs. Does he want to call in backup? Well, he can't. All oh, right. I mm -hmm. can. So I pull this guy in. Do now it. I'm Ooh. rolling two combat dice to Tim's one combat dice. This is First the part of the count. game that some people don't like. This is highest die result. 
He rolled a two. I rolled hey! a two one. So bam. <laughs> See, that is one of the things I like about the combat in this game because you don't know what's going to happen. I had the advantage, but you won the combat. And that was like celebration worthy and we're yeah, joking yeah. around. Yeah. But like when you're really playing this game and like I've got two workers and I've got my dragon who, by the way, uses three combat dice yeah. and I've got my wizard over there. Okay, now I am rocking six combat dice to Tim's still one. We're going to roll him again. If he gets the Let's highest do Let's do it. result, just for fun, I did roll a six. I got a three. I'm, I'm incrementally going up. So if I roll this three more times, I'll get to a six. Okay. So that, to me, is what makes it fun. You can also uh, add swords, which give you more combat dice. So say Tim had um, lost battles previously, he'd have some swords to spend on right. dice. Right. And that's a nice thing. You get those for free when you lose battles. Yep. So the, the winner goes up the glory track over here, and it has additional bonuses as you go up it. More points, more resources, moving up these different elemental tracks. The loser instantly goes to Elder Vale over there, um, the, the underworld. underworld, and he immediately gets a sword. He, his people want to revenge his death. So now Tim has an additional sword to use for combat moving forward. Okay, so you continue to do this until either um, the tiles are gone, which I didn't even show you the explore mechanic because the combat I think is cool. Was, was so crazy. But your dungeon tile that you use is hiding on me. It's where you're at. You're, it's where you're I'm at. I'm on it. You I'm hiding it. it. Yeah, so that's uh, the explore mechanic in this game. Draw a new tile place it anywhere, and then you can buy a new Tableau card. So your Tableau cards are going to allow you to build up your recall engine over here. So the more of them you have available, the more workers that you can place when you recall. <coughs> so now instead of just these basic actions, I've also got this action that I can do to give myself more stuff. Mm -hmm. More stuff is good, makes your engine better. So you continue until all of these are gone, all or all of your dwellings are gone, and then you tally up your bonus, your points at the end. And another neat thing is when you go to like one of these tiles, right? You can take one of these and you can spend it for the resources shown, or you can kind of just make it your gather space yeah, and upgrade and, it. And now instead of like, oh, just getting a scroll, I can get a scroll or a potion. Mm -hmm. Some of them is like two, get, get two gems, get two of a thing. So you're able to also upgrade your own little player board and do different things. And this one even has a slot, right? Which will allow you to get, to put an upgraded spot on there. Yep. Yep. But um, you have to be the highest on one of these tracks in order to claim that one. Yep. So, yeah, the ones that are considered the doors, these are the first cards that pop up uh, when you explore the dungeons. All of those are you get an additional good if you're the highest on the track. Um, and you always start one spot up on the track that your you color like a starting is. Card, so, like, yeah. I would start green because I'm the, start, uh, the green player. Um, every time you build a dwelling, you go up on the tracks based on how many of these icons are on the spot. Plus, every time you buy one of the adventure cards, you go up on one of those tracks. And those tracks are huge because those give you more points for the cards that you've built. Yeah. They're multipliers for those cards <coughs> and dwellings. Yeah, and what's also neat is you don't have enough tokens to go up on all these tracks. Yeah, you got to pick. So you got to kind of pick. Yeah. Um, you are able to pull your thing off and like restart it and start a new track, but you get you basically lose all the benefits you had from being as high as you were on that previous track. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, this game's pretty neat. Uh, it's not, this sounds like a lot, but really, like from what Mike told you just now, if we were all just going to play, you could take a turn, and I think by a couple, after a couple of turns, you've got a really good idea on, on how it plays. And, and yeah. you might ask a question or two, like, well, what's this track do, or what's this icon mean? But it's all really pretty straightforward. I don't think there were very many rules clarifications we needed to look up mm -hmm. uh, when, we, when you taught it to us. I feel like everybody had a pretty good grasp. Uh, uh, another thing that people may not like about the game uh, that I didn't have a problem with is I could see uh, you feeling like you're too limited mm -hmm. uh, with your placement, right? So if if I you know you know you go here, you go here. I'm just gonna take one of your guys, uh, and you're here. You know, just give me a bunch of your guys. Um, I want to. Oh, I got a bunch over here. Uh, let's just say, right? Like, like now. You know, even if these are all here and it's like, well, I kind of want to go like in this area and do one of these things or get these things. But all is open is down here. 
And it's like, ah, that might be a bummer, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not be able to get in a position to get to, to where you want to go. To get to where I want to go. That's what I ran into. I get it, right? Like, uh, well, you know, but for me, it's like, well, you know what? Like, I got to be loose with my strategy. Right? I got to just figure something out. I'm going to, mm-hmm. oh, hell, I'll just take this one. You know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend this. I'm going to do something. You know, or, or, you know what I mean? Like, because if it's blocked up, it's blocked up, you know, and then, or, you know, and then maybe you don't want to do combat, but sometimes you have to, right? I think for me, it's not the, uh, the hard part for me with combat and why I was shy about combat sometimes was not like, um, oh, I don't want to lose as much as like, uh, you're playing on recalling those to trigger things. Yeah. You don't want them to die. Yeah. I need to make to sure those guys are there. Yeah. Right. Uh, but also, you know, and I did a good job of, I didn't win or anything. But I felt like I was doing a good job because I had this ability where if I recalled at least three workers, I got to move up on the glory track. So I was kind of just staying away from everybody and just getting just hanging out in the empty areas. Right. And, and maximizing mm-hmm. my gameplay around that. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to do as many of the uh, the doors and the other adventure cards as everybody else. But those were like highly contested areas a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of people were going for those. And I get it. Right. Uh, but. But I, but I, I, I felt like I played it in a way that I understood the game very well, understood all the mechanics, mm-hmm. and, um, and I still had a good time. I did a lot of different things. I, I love all of the different races you've got in the board and you or in the game. And then each for each color, there's two different sides. Like I specifically picked the side where my wizard would let me use potions as wilds. Yeah. Uh, basically. And then I just went potion heavy. That was the only thing I hyper focused yeah. on was just having ways to generate potions so that I could keep doing the things I wanted to do. Right. Like I could build my dwellings easy. You know, I didn't have to worry about having mm-hmm. hammers to build my dwellings. And I didn't, you know, I could pay, pay the cost when I was getting these cards. It was easy for me to pay the cost because all I had to do was make sure I was pulling that wizard off and putting him on whatever action. You want Whenever I put that wizard down, either here or down here, you know, I just had to use the wizard to trigger the action to be able to use the wilds. I thought that was a really neat thing. Um, the other side of my board, the wizards do completely different things. Uh, like my here, my wizard can occupy my spaces with my own units. So like I could double down right with the wizard, uh, the cannoneer, right? My warriors may join battles from in adjacent realms without moving. Uh, and they don't die and they just fire off cannonballs into the other side, you know, into the adjacent areas, which is pretty awesome. Um, yeah, the different abilities, they, they feel different, but I haven't seen any that felt necessarily overpowered. Sure. But at the same time, when we played with Patrick, he used a light blue faction. And he was just moving everywhere. Yeah, so yeah, he, he was able to put down anywhere he wanted. Yeah, so it acted like the worker was the wizard, which allows you to put it anywhere on the board mm-hmm. without being adjacent. So he could go wherever he wanted. That was that was a really... Was tough to deal with. Yeah, it really was. Um, because of course he took the best spots. Yeah. So you have Everywhere no choice I to go. but he to was battle to my him, right even too. if he didn't want to. Yeah. yeah. It made the board a lot more crowded um, by having four players, of course. We set this up for three players. There are more tiles with more players. Mm-hmm. Um, you also, of course, you use one of each elemental for the number of players, but then you add two. So there's five elementals in play at all times. So, like, we set it up so that we have five monsters. And these monsters will come out, and they'll start moving toward oh, you. Oh, yeah, they show up, start, spots start too. slapping you around, you know, and you can kill them, but there's also ways you can bring them back. Uh, cause yeah. I had a card that l- would let me do that. And I was kind of hoping to get the opportunity to do it just to mess with somebody, but it never kind of worked out. Yeah. The um, domination mechanic there. So if you kill one of the monsters in the, in the game, there's a, a card that you can get from the adventure decks that allow you to dominate them and use them as your own monster. Um, and you get the abilities that those monsters would have. There's not a lot of those though. So, I mean, some people think those might be overpowered, but you don't see it. I've actually played five games now and i've seen dominated monsters once sure so it doesn't come out a whole lot um but the monsters are varied as well they have their Mm -hmm. own different abilities and when you have the legendary edition yeah they roar they make noise yeah they roar it's fun um but yeah i know bob you said you felt kind of um constricted on where you could go yeah it was was a combination of Patrick sitting next to me with the being able to go anywhere and taking all the best spots. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And then the monsters that we had out there, so any spots that were left were going to get attacked right away. We had a lot come and out, then, too. Yeah, and then you being combat heavy and you were moving yeah. in on my guys. And I was building to do recall stuff. Like, I had a, a big tableau, and I was going to mm-hmm. be able to recall and trigger a bunch of stuff. But when they die, you don't get to recall them and trigger Which things. is what you yeah. needed to do what I was doing. And stop taking the juicy spots where I you're gonna didn't, get. I never got a juicy spot. <laughs> yeah, and and hide <laughs> out on, the, on me, hide me. out on the fringes. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so it was it was it was tough for me to really kind of like get going, you know. But I mean, I appreciate a lot of the mechanics on it, and I'm not gonna like you know ding it because I had a not great experience the first time around because there are I'm sure strategies that I could have invoked, and like I did score a lot more points than I thought I was gonna get right. So by getting these cards and move those moving you up these tracks, I was able to score significantly more points than I thought I was going to end up with. So mm. that was that was a nice feeling, you know, to kind of bring me back into it a little bit. But you don't see those to the very end. So. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you don't really get a sense of who's winning until the very end. There's yeah. There are some magic cards that will pop out that allow you to score during the game, but, yeah, 90% of the points are at the end. Yeah, they're, like, usually, like, hidden objective kind of cards, right, where you can yeah. get points. And if you I also X found myself trying to make the best use of my faction ability, and mine was the uh, the black faction, and it kind of forced me to be aggressive. Sure. Um, and I had a soldier that if he ever went to the underworld, he'd come back with a sword I could slot, and then that was an extra battle die. Mm-hmm. And then I also got my dragon who could pull my soldier out of the underworld. I so I had two reasons to get your encouraging soldier. me to get my yeah. soldier out there and bully mm-hmm. people around. But then I couldn't, I couldn't roll any dice to kill your soldier. Yeah. And you just kept killing my guys. And I did go the farthest up the glory track. I definitely mm-hmm. won a lot more battles than everybody, but I didn't win. It, right. I mean, so those lucky rolls and my aggressive nature didn't, didn't win the game didn't for me off, at right. all. Yeah. I actually felt kind of like you did how you couldn't, get um the guys where you wanted them out here mm-hmm. i felt like i had a terrible tableau engine going so i was so focused on let's just be aggressive and push people off the board that it kind of slacked on my tableau and that mm-hmm. ended up costing me sure sure but yeah so multiple ways to score points yep. and yeah. a lot of different strategies involved in this um and i do feel like you can this can be a game where you can have a you could not really have like a solid strategy of your first couple actions and not totally be punished sure. for it. Uh, I do feel like there's some room to kind of move around and recoop, you know, and, and, recoop and adjust and everything, right? Because you weren't getting to do a bunch of stuff you wanted to do, but you were still able to score a boatload of points. Yeah, it was a huge tableau. By doing, but you were doing the actions you were able to do very well, right? So, I mean, there's things to be said for that. Yeah, and plus like having to you know, like how some of the monsters work, because like, I, I was having to take the dungeon action a lot, which is how I got all those cards. Right. I should have started putting more of those monsters like next to other monsters and not so kind of spread, spread out. out. Yeah. Because that way, like everywhere you went, there's a monster waiting to move it, in it on It got you. tough at yeah. the end. There was literally monsters in almost like every corner yeah, of the board. Yeah, we had a lot of them out. Uh, uh, the game comes with, I'm, I'm assuming this isn't just a Kickstarter edition version nope. uh, thing, but it comes with these really good player aids uh, that break things down uh, pretty well. Mm-hmm. Give you player order or uh, order of operations, right? For like battle and things like that. Scoring during the game. Look at that. 20 to 40% of the scoring is during the game. The end of the game is 60 to 80% mm. of your scoring. My percentages were off. I didn't think they'd be on the, the reference card. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. But no, but I like that they give you that, those kind of, you know, like yeah, this definitely. is, this is where you're going to get all your points. Don't worry about it too much during the game. You're going to get them all by the end of the game. It's like how well you built everything up. Um, so we're all going to go around and rate this. Uh, we are going to give it each our own rating from 1 to 10, uh, like uh, BGG, for example. And then uh, so that you don't have an individual rating from each of us that you got to worry about keeping track of. Uh, we're going to average them all together. And that's what we'll post. And if, like as Dan likes to say, if you want to look up what Board Game Rundown thinks of Dwellings of Eldervale, we'll have one nice averaged out rating between the three of us. Yep. Uh, Mike, this is your game. I'm going to make you go first. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've played this uh, about five times now. Um, I've played it three player once I've played it two player three times, uh, and now a four player game. And each time I, I kind of get that feeling like, like what you had mentioned, Bob, where I wasn't quite able to do some of the things that I was able to do. And yet that hasn't slighted me from enjoying it. I mm-hmm. actually find myself wanting to play it again more often because I'm like, oh, I think I could have handled this a little bit better. Yeah. Like it never goes quite as good as my strategy. I think it's going to build out. Um, it, it just, it doesn't, but I still come back to the game. Yeah. Um, the components of course, like are 15 out of 10. 
Um, yeah. With this addition, you also have game trays that make everything yes. super beautiful. easy super to beautiful. sort. This everything comes with them. Player bits are all in there. They're not going yeah, anywhere. and the fact yeah. that awesome. those snap snap in and they don't fall out. Really um, good. Noise makers, you know, mm. it is what it is. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. Um, the gameplay itself, that's always number one for me because I've you know components don't make or break a game. Theme mm-hmm. doesn't make a game for me. It's decisions. And I think this game is full of interesting decisions. Mm-hmm. There are multiple different ways to play it and win. Mm-hmm. There's, even after five plays, a lot of content I still haven't even seen. Yeah. Um, so the replayability I, is absolutely there. I always say if it's an eight or higher, I would go out and buy the game and put it in my collection. I do own it. I actually <laughs> got it in a trade, so I did oh, not yeah. pull the, I did not pay the full $200 price that guy cost and i know they had to reprint it and now they're redoing it mm-hmm. it's an eight for me it's a solid game i think you should play it may not be for everybody because it's not as big and epic as you think it's going to be yeah, by looking at it right or looking at the box even it doesn't get as big as epic as, as you would think it's it's a euro at its heart but it's still got a lot of interesting thing go things going for it so it's a it's a solid eight for me right on bobby right. bobby what do you think um well like I said, I didn't have the you know the best experience playing it for the first time, but I'm gonna go through a lot of the the, the pros, right? Like like we were saying, the trays, awesome. These snap in place, they lock everything down, hold it all out, and then there's not a ton of setup as far as that because you take the snap the lid off, there it is, it's ready to go. Uh, a lot of color specific things for the realms. However, if you look real close, there's icons on every one of these. Mm-hmm. So thank you, appreciate that because like these are kind of tough to, to, to tell apart. You know, uh, these a little bit right when you're looking like is that the white one or the or like you know the yellow one are a little bit difficult on the tile, but you just look at the symbol, it's easy to find on the track. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Um, I like the silk screen on on the meep- on the meeples. Those are cool. Um, putting the the roof. On your guy's head. That's yeah, that's a so unique good. idea. And then it also shorts you workers. Mm-hmm. Um, I like these guys are badass. Like I could do without that part of it a little bit because it <laughs> sometimes it goes off when you don't want it to. Um, I thought that was neat. Uh, the uh, thing that we talked about before, how you can end, you can rush the end game, right? So if you just keep taking that dungeon action and putting tiles out, as soon as those tiles run out, the game is over, right? Mm-hmm. So that's a way to kind of like rush that mechanic. Uh, like I said, it did feel a little limited as far as like I couldn't place guys where I wanted to or do things I just I would have to adjust my strategy so I would have to try it again um nice thick cardboard tokens it's not going to warp like a lot of the games we see these days are doing don't care for um I, I'd probably give it a, a an eight I think you're right I think it is an eight's a solid score like it's worker placement I like the fact that when you recall you recall them like one at a time and you can trigger abilities to go off that way instead of having to do like all at once you can uh, yeah. You can really kind of game that system a little bit. Right. Um, I like how all the little uh, bits are all shaped like swords or hammers. Like, that's mm-hmm. that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. So, yeah. Yeah, so for me, right, um, it's like this game's beautiful. It's not as epic mm-hmm. as you would think by looking at the box or looking at the monsters. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that big of a problem, though. Uh, not a problem at all for me, actually. Um I do think it would seem intimidating to like newer players where I don't think this game's that hard. No. Um, I love the recall mechanic, like the way mm-hmm. that they, they don't just come back to your pool, right? It's a lot of games, right? Played a ton of games where you, all right, well, my home. action is I'm, I'm pulling yeah. everybody back. Right. But no, 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 I'm pulling everybody back, but I'm doing things with them. You yep. know, I'm doing extra things with them. And then sometimes it's like, well, no, oh, it sucks. I don't, you know, if I put this guy out now, I don't have a place to put him when I come back. So you're also kind of judging the timing of like when you, cause you can pull them back whenever you want. Yeah. You don't have to have them all out. You can just choose. Them yeah. Out. And it's nice, you know, and, and again, it doesn't punish you by like basically a, in a turn of inaction, like yeah. pulling still them back things. still does things. That's just, which is a really nice mechanic. Um, I think my biggest negative to this game, honestly, honestly, my biggest negative is I would not want the retail version because mm. I don't want the standees like I want the miniatures yeah. for these. I want the game trays. I'd want the game trays. You know, like or the standee wouldn't bother me. The game trays makes a big I, I want the game trays. You know, I, I really like the game trays and the the easy I cannot imagine trying to set this game up without the game trays. <laughs> 
It would you know take what I mean? Yeah. You know, um, and it takes a while anyway. Yeah, right. yeah. It takes it takes long enough setup as it is. Anyways, uh, it is a bit of a table hog. Uh, we've kind of condensed everything right to fit on this camera here. Uh, we when we played, we were on a massive table. We had things spread out pretty yeah. good. Uh, it, but you know, so everybody kind of had room and everything. But I mean, asymmetric player powers. Absolutely love that. Uh, the Kickstarter version of the components are just dynamite. They really are shaped. You know, tokens, metal coins, uh, you know, silkscreen meeples look great. These are very functional, and I would not want miniatures for these. I've got miniatures for these. They look great. Mm-hmm. I would be just disappointed. Not like, oh, I'm not going to play that. It's standees. But, I mean, I would be disappointed because these are fun. And I don't, you know, monster base is fine. Whatever. They make the noise. I think it's fun, uh, especially when you, like, slam one down on the thing. Um, oh, it's coming for you. Uh, but you know, whatever, those are arbitrary, but I would want the, the minis, you know, in there anyways, uh, the tiles, the art, the colors are vibrant. Uh, I mean, there's a lot going on. The player aids are really good. Yep. Um, this was a game though, when we first played and we like kind of walked away from it, I was like mm, seven, seven and a half, you know, mm-hmm. it felt limiting, mm-hmm. but then I started thinking about it and I'm just like, well, I like it though. When games are limiting because it forces you to be creative with your strategy. I want like no offense, right? But like, if you're able to just sit down and do whatever you want every game that you play, you're never gonna lose. Oh, thanks. No, I mean, <laughs> I mean that as a compliment. Yeah, yeah. Like you, you are a very good player. You are really, uh, when a game clicks for you, you are a dangerous player because you see how a lot of stuff works, right? So, if I'm gonna sit down and play a game like this with you, for me to have any kind of competitive edge. I need to be able, I need, I need you to be disrupted. I need to limit you. Right. And I'm thinking, and it's like, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that makes, that makes it so that, uh, you can be competitive. I wouldn't say you're going to be really good at the game. Just so in chaos, you know, and wrecking everybody else's game. That's Mm -hmm. a bummer. Like, don't do that. But I had a plan, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, and, and yeah, I was limited, but it's like, well, I'm limited and that sucks and I can't go here, but Bob can't go there. You know, now, Patrick could go anywhere he wanted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but but Mike can't go there, you know? And so it's like, so we're all kind of in the same boat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I felt like that, you know, for the most part, that was a pretty good equalizer, you know, and everything. And then I, you know, I just, the more it kind of simmered and it's like, man, I kind of want to play that. I want to play that again. And it, it, it moved up. It moved up to a very solid eight, mm-hmm. probably go to an eight and a half after four or five plays mm-hmm. of seeing, because I would be like, no, these guys were amazing. I love these guys, but I want to try somebody completely different. Yeah. You know, there's and, what? There's still four more factions to choose from, and each of those factions has two more sides. Uh, there's eight, eight total, factions. and they're all double sided. So yeah. there's 16, 16, pretty awesome. 16 different things you can do, you know. And so this is a game where it's like, I just kind of want to see how they, you know, they work, they mm-hmm. work, they work. Because it was like, I don't care what color you hand me, whatever. You know, I said blue. Uh, you know, I got blue. I had two awesome things to pick for, you know, choose from, you know, like. I would love to try to do these guys better, the Atlanteans, but man, I'm like, eh, I'm going to try, you know, I'd try the pirates, yeah. you know, like next time Bef- I would try every one of these before I go back just mm. because I want to see what they all do. Uh, yeah. So this is a very, I mean, what are we eights all the way eights, across the board? Yeah. So uh, I guess we average eight, 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 eight. eight. It's an eight. Yeah. It's yeah. Right this there. is a really good game. Mm-hmm. This is a really good game. <laughs> he agrees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think for me, the price point is daunting. So that's sort of a negative uh, because personal preference, and this is my own hangup, is I would want the nicer version of the game. Thankfully, Mike has the game. Thankfully, Mike likes the game, so he will probably want to play it. Like, hey, "Hey, let's play that. You want to play that? And then (laughs) the other thing, right, is like this is something uh, I talked about in a a different episode where like a game like Gaia Project Mm -hmm. is like, I can't just plop down, you know, like, oh, game night, let's just pull this one off the off the off the shelf and we're going to play this. And it's like, Oh God, you know, now I'm going to be stuck here for four hours. and We're going to be trying to figure this out. You know, I'm in hell. Like, I just don't want to do that. But this game is not so complicated, uh, or difficult, uh, that, that you couldn't just go, Hey, I brought this. If you guys feel like playing it, I can teach it. I mean, we mm-hmm. played a four player game. game. With in, learning, with little learning, over two. little over two hours. Yeah. That's not bad. And we could have had it even faster, you know, mm-hmm. like, Without the learning, I mean, it would have been an hour and a half without the yeah. learning, Yeah, you know? And so to play a game with like this scale and all this awesome stuff in an hour and a half, you know, two hours, 
sign me up, sign yeah, me up all absolutely. the time, you know? And, yeah. and so there's, there's just a lot of things I really liked about it and it there, does really well. There's modules of course that can change up the, the gameplay as well. Oh, okay. I know one thing Bob had mentioned afterwards, he was interested in the two V two game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Which I looked yeah. Into, yeah. And we have to try that. Yeah. Sometime, yeah that'd be fun. Cause uh, it does change a few of the mechanics a little bit, mostly mm -hmm. sharing resources and everything and the adventure cards. Um, I talked about it briefly, which I, I a hundred percent recommend it using this. If if you don't mind the game going a little longer, which is the Oracle. The Oracle allows you to get an additional adventure card without having to pull a dungeon tile. Mm -hmm. So the end game may go longer, but your engine is going to get built out. Sure. More. And sometimes that's more satisfying too, right? Absolutely. Uh, you want to, a lot of times, really good engine builders will end like three turns before your engine is like yeah, really. Like, oh, my engine's great. What do you mean? It's over. <laughs> like, oh, no. Like, I want to have it like two turns where this just everything. Just let it hum just, for a little bit. Oh, yeah, and go. So that's a neat idea. And I would, I would definitely be down for that because you're going to sit down knowing, like, okay, this is what we're doing. It's a possibility. Yeah. Um, and you could still you could still rush the end of the game right. oh, yeah. okay. by going there and Every forcing time. them tiles to oh, come yeah, out, sure. right? So, but yeah, so this uh, has been Dwellings of Eldervale. Thank you, Mike, for bringing in your copy. Thanks yeah. for teaching us how to play Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it was a really good experience. This was probably one that if you hadn't brought, like I would have been like, well, I'm aware of it. You know, it looks pretty cool, but I'm aware of it. Never played it. Nobody I know has it. And I've been bringing it to Caleb and Spencer's for like a month now. And I'm like, you got to play this at some point. And now, yeah. And now I'll be like, hey, guys, we need to play this at some point. Yeah. Uh, so there'll at least be two of us, you Pushing know, for it. chirping. It, it, it'll get played. It'll get played again. Especially now, right? It'll be also an easier teach. Because Absolutely. now we, everybody, True. you know, multiple, when multiple people know how to play, you know, it, it, it can kind of help with some of the clarifications down the road or as stuff gets going. So, anyways, guys, uh, for the Board Game Rundown, I've been Tim. I've been Bob. I've been Mike. And this was Dwellings of Eldervale. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out the Board Game Rundown. If you like what you saw, like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Share our videos on social media and spread the word. We publish new content weekly, including reviews, unboxing, and Let's Plays. And as always, thanks for watching.